He's still my boy. He's still my boy. Chris Weidman is still our boy. And he always has been from the very beginning. You just had to believe in his chin. Believe that the chin of Chris Weidman could take one more punch to earn himself the victory against Omari Akhmadov because that fight just took place in the co-main event of UFC Fight Night Vegas 6, Lewis vs. Olenek. And it was amazing. It wasn't amazing. It was actually a very lacklustre fight and a very lacklustre performance from both men. It was actually somewhat embarrassing. But he's still our boy. And that's the only thing that matters in MMA. We have Weidman. The world is pure again. Okay? We didn't see Weidman humiliatingly KO'd. Like we always seem to do nowadays. He won. He took punches as well. It's not like he just didn't get punched and took him down in the first round and submitted him. He took punches. And, his, and he wasn't KO'd. He took punches and he wasn't KO'd. What has Chris Weidman been up to? Whose chin has he borrowed? And can he give it back? Because that's illegal. You can't steal people's property. But still, Chris Weidman beat Omari Akhmadov in the co-main event of UFC Fight Night Vegas 6, Lewis vs. Olenek. And I'm so happy. One, because I predicted that Weidman w would win by out-grappling Omari Akhmadov. Very happy about that one. I thought it was a decent prediction. A lot of people were picking against Weidman purely based on his chin. But I decided, you know what? I'm going to ignore chin density levels and chin density warnings that are going off around Chris Weidman. Because if there is a clear sign that someone can't take punishment anymore, it is Chris Weidman. He is that sign. I just, I just knew he was going to be Akhmadov. Because Akhmadov is not good. Although he beat Ian Heinich. I know he beat Ian Heinich. He did it by a close decision. But he got the job done against Ian Heinich. I really do understand that. Believe me. Chris Weidman can wrestle, man. He really can wrestle well. And I know he gassed out in this fight, which was really worrying. But Chris Weidman can wrestle and he can fight. If you take away the chin density levels and move that out of the argument, you were looking at a contest here between Omari Akhmadov and Chris Weidman with a guy in Omari Akhmadov who might have the worst gas tank in the middleweight division other than Edmund Shabazian. He always gasses out as the fight goes on. He doesn't do well against wrestlers, especially bigger guys, I would imagine anyway before watching this fight, that Weidman was going to go out there and be easily able to outgrapple Omari Akhmadov. However, in the second round, Omari Akhmadov actually was looking really good. And there was a moment in the second round as well where I shit my pants. I really did because I had a lot of dignity on the line here by picking Chris Weidman because he could have really embarrassed me here against Omari Akhmadov, but he got the job done. Akhmadov got... There was a situation in that second round where Chris Weidman looked so gassed out, man. He looked so gassed out. I don't know what happened with Chris Weidman. He said he had the worst weight cut of his career. I imagine that somewhat to be true because I've seen Chris Weidman go five rounds with Lyoto Machida and go five rounds hard as well at that same time. Go four rounds with Luke Rockhold. Even if he's getting beaten up for two of those rounds, he still didn't look as gassed out. I've seen him go two hard rounds and almost three complete rounds with Jacare Souza at a record pace. And he didn't really look too gassed out there either. But in this fight, in the second round, he looked so tired, but I was just so happy that it was Omari Akhmadov in front of him. Because if it was anyone else, other than Edmund Shabazian as well, if there was anyone else in front of Chris Weidman there in the second round, he's getting KO'd and finished. Anyone else in the top 10. But Omari Akhmadov has a real, real cardio issue. He's got a massive cardio problem, and he has done throughout his entire career. If he fights at a massive pace that's a high pace... He cannot go three rounds. He gasses out hard in the third. That's what we saw in Weidman versus Akhmadov. Weidman got a second wind, came out in the third round, won the initial situation, got on top, and it was just all Weidman from there in that third round, staying on top, keeping balance. Not too exciting, don't get me wrong, but there's something about a Weidman fight where it's not even excitement. It's anxiety. It really is anxiety because... You don't watch a Weidman fight and be like, whoa, this is crazy. You watch a Weidman fight and you're like, ew, ew, ooh, ooh, ew. and you're like concerned about every single punch that lands because you know that Weidman could be KO'd in hilarious fashion at any moment. Weidman, say what you want about his style. It's not entertaining whatsoever, but there's something about a Weidman fight 
where the anxiety of it all is almost more exciting than like the build up of Yol Romero versus Paulo Costa. Like in Paulo Costa versus Yol Romero, like you know they're probably going to go to war. But with Weidman versus anyone, you have no idea what's going to happen. He could get dinked by the, he could get KO'd by a jab, Todd Duffy style. Honestly, he could get KO'd by a jab and just sink downwards. Todd Duffy did it to someone else, by the way. I'm not saying that Todd Duffy got KO'd by a jab. Todd Duffy doesn't have a good chin either. But either way, we're talking about Chris Weidman's bad chin. It's worrying watching Weidman fight, but we got through it. He's still our boy. I'm so glad that Weidman got the win because I'll be honest with you guys, I don't think I could have taken another Weidman loss because I feel guilty. Every single time I watch Chris Weidman go out there and lose by KO hilariously, I feel so guilty because it, I feel bad for Weidman. He's such a fool from grace. Like, even Cody Garbrandt. If I watched Cody Garbrandt get KO'd by Rafael Asuncao, I would be sad as well, even though I kind of want it to happen because Cody Garbrandt used to be a bit of an arrogant cunt. He's okay now, but he used to be quite bad, so it was kind of like he had it coming to him. But Chris Weidman's a nice guy, family guy. It's just, it hurts me sometimes to see Weidman getting KO'd, and I'm so glad that we didn't end up seeing Weidman get KO'd. I don't know who I want to see him take on next. He said he wants the elites of the division. I could see him winning against a lot of those guys in that division. I really could. Not the top level guys. I really don't think he's going to be beating any of the Whitakers, the Cannoneers, the Costas, the Romeros, or the Israel Adesanyas. Don't get me wrong. Maybe he'd have a chance against Adesanya just because of the wrestling, but still. I just feel as though he he he's not going to become champion again. And it, and it really does hurt me because eventually Weidman's going to get KO'd again. Because he wants to continue fighting. He's going to continue fighting. He will get KO'd. If I was Chris Weidman, I would take my next fight and make the decision very, very carefully, Weidman. Because you could run into some real danger. If you want to take on Derek Brunson, be my guest. Be my guest. Go take on Derek Brunson. It's a winnable fight. It's a dangerous fight because Derek Brunson just showed that he still has it in the bag. But it's a winnable fight for Chris Weidman. If he jumps back in there against some of these top dogs, he's going to get destroyed. And I don't know how long of a layoff he wants, but we'll see what happens, man. We will see what happens because maybe he takes on the loser of Whitaker versus Cannoneer. And if that happens... It's going to be problems. I think everyone in the top five beats Weidman at this point in his career. But Weidman is still our boy. Goes out there with the wrestling. Looked kind of okay on the feet as well in the first round. Landed some big shots. Omari Akhmadov just kind of got exposed as not being too good in my opinion. I think that's quite fair to say that Omari Akhmadov just was never really that good in the first place. I think that's somewhat okay to say because he didn't really do anything in this fight. I mean, he was trying to land some big shots, don't get me wrong. Some of them landed. Not with any power whatsoever, really. I mean, if honestly, I, I, I know it's bad to say, but if Omari Akhmadov at this point in his career can't beat Chris Weidman, coming back down to middleweight and having the worst weight cut of his career, it's kind of worrying for my Omari Akhmadov. I think he's going to bounce back. I could actually maybe see them doing an Edmund Shabazian versus Omari Akhmadov next. That wouldn't surprise me if they made that fight, if they wanted to do an Omari Akhmadov versus Marvin Vittori rematch because it was a draw the first time. Marvin Vittori ended up with that fight destroying Akhmadov in the third round, but Omari Akhmadov had a successful first and second against Marvin Vittori. But still, fun matchups to make. Don't throw Weidman to the top five, I beg of you, because he's going to die. Give him someone like Brunson. Give him someone maybe Darren Till at a push. I wouldn't mind seeing that matchup. Darren Till take on a real middleweight grappler. That would be somewhat interesting. I know Darren Till talks about his legendary takedown defense, but to be fair, we've only really seen it against strikers in Kelvin Gastelum and Robert Whittaker so far at middleweight. So you want to test out that takedown defense. Let's see you do it against a guy like Chris Weidman. I don't mind Darren Till's chances in that fight either. Till versus Weidman's good. Brunson versus Weidman is good. Any of those fights are pretty good. Weidman versus someone who's an up-and-comer. Who knows? Don't feed him to the top five or he's going to die. But he's still our boy. And that's all that matters. Weidman looked good, man. Took big shots. Omari Akhmadov just completely gassed out in the third round. Had no answer for Weidman being on top. 
Wyman did well. Wyman did well. He almost had an arm triangle at some point. He was looking for the arm triangle. He just couldn't quite get Omari Akhmadov's elbow in the right position. And by that point as well, they were all so sweaty because both of them were so gassed out in the second round. I'm going to say this before the end. It was kind of embarrassing looking back. Now, in the moment, I'm like worried and, and, and like going through immense stress because any moment now, I know that Weidman, like the wind could change and Weidman could do the fucking chicken dance. You never know. Weidman could get KO'd at any point. So you're not really focusing when you're in the middle of watching this fight. But looking back at it now, somewhat of an embarrassing performance because they both gassed out so quickly. Don't show up with five minutes of cardio. You just watch Shabazian fail because of that reason. Don't show up with five minutes of cardio. That's a disgrace. You're pro athletes. Come on, guys. But still, Wyman got it done. Managed to ride out the second round and not get destroyed too hard. Only lost the second round minorly, but still lost the second round pretty clearly. Came back in the third. Omari Akhmadov, I believe, has been figured out at this point in his career. I mean, he's an older guy. It's not like he's a... I know Wyman said he's a tough kid and he's going to be back. I don't know why Americans call each other kid. Like, Dana White calls people kid, even though they're like... 40 years of age sometimes like he'll uh, Dana, I think I've heard Dana White called Glover Teixeira a kid before Wyman called him a kid Omari Akhmadov is getting up there in age I don't know what he's going to do next but he should take on Shabazian because they both have terrible gas tanks and I don't know they both have terrible gas tanks only one terrible gas tank can prevail Decent scrap, though. I enjoyed it. It was very exciting. Only because I was worried about Weidman getting KO'd. But other than that, good good grappling. Weidman gets it done. Good job, Weidman. Like and subscribe, everyone. Thank you for watching. See you later.